for the way God wants it to be. So I just want you to remember that, yes, this is the house of God. Hallelujah. Even in the absence, we are greeting our bishop. We are praying for him that what he is doing over there, God will use him mightily to fulfill it. Hallelujah. And so this is a God that is not uh, just in one place. He is omnipresent. So here he is in this house today, Ebenezer Urban Ministry Center. Just give a shout unto God for his goodness. Amen. Amen. What a mighty God. I cannot even phantom this, that we are here serving him. And many things are happening. I just want to welcome the Lord's presence which has been here to be magnified in everybody's life, to be strengthened in everybody's life. I saw Sister Sharif here this morning. I think she got engaged uh, what, last week, right? We welcome you, we congratulate you and your husband. Hallelujah to be. Well, <laughs> God is so good. So this day, I have come that whatever God will give me will be given unto you. I'm not by myself. I know the spirit of God is here. Hallelujah. When he moves, I move in it. And there is no fear in anything because he's given me power. He's given me love. And he's given me a sound mind. Hallelujah. So I'm here to bust through. But before you sit down, we are going to hear the, um, the scriptures that we have for today. I think it's a long one, but I, we have to hear these things again and again. Faith comes by hearing, hearing and hearing the word of God. And so here we are. Please, as you stand with me for the word, it's taken from... John chapter 4 from verse 5. If I jump, you know the story already, so don't be worried. And he says, so he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot, of, uh, plot ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour, which is usually 12 noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Hallelujah. The woman, the woman didn't know who Jesus was. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with. And the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will test, uh, will, will test again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never test. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up in everlasting life. What a God. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not taste nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have said well. 
is well said. I have no husband. For you have had five husbands. And the one whom you now have is not your husband. In that you spoke truly. The, the woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain. And you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where we ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me. The hour is coming when you will never and neither worship on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking sight to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah, that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I am, uh, I who speak to you, am he. Hallelujah. So this is Jesus. And at this point, his disciples came, and they marveled that he walked, uh, talked with a woman. Yet no one said, what do you seek? Why are you talking with her? The woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city, and said to the man, come see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came to him. Amen and amen. The word of God. If you didn't get anything at all, if you don't get anything at all, the word has been spoken. Hallelujah to your ears. Please be seated. Hallelujah. We give glory to God. We give glory to God. What a mighty God. Hmm. I will go the hard way first. You know, when people want to tell you things, sometimes they ask you, do you want me to tell you the soft, you know, the, the good news or the bad news? I'm not talking about any, but we are not starting with the good because my title for this is called Disciplined to Disciple. Disciplined. To disciple and yesterday when the leaders met they were revealing some secrets of what I had here and I saw it sister Chin talking about holiness and all yes we serve a living God the word of God in Romans tells us chapter 10 he says for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved how then shall they call on him whom they have not believed. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher, a discipler, without somebody to speak the word? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring good tidings of God. So we have to be out there. We have to. And it's, I always say this, when you buy a new place, you call your friends, you try to show off how good God has blessed you. And if you have Jesus, hallelujah, you have everything else. In this and seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then the monies and all those things that we will not take anywhere, he will add it to you. Hallelujah. He will add that onto your uh, belongings. But we serve a God who knows what we need. And he blesses us with what we need. Sometimes we go ahead. When I was reading the, uh, that scripture and I heard the hour has come and now is and all that. It reminded me of the night God spoke and said the hour had come. And now is. 
around 12 midnight. And the following uh, the uh, Sunday, we went to move from the church that we were because God wanted me to leave. And I had prayed for one year with a pastor friend. This is the God we serve. He orders our steps. He moves with us when, hallelujah. So we cannot be on our own. He sends us. When you, he calls you, he also blesses you with a gift that will take you anywhere that you have to go. He gives you that authority. He gives you that power. You are not afraid of faces. Hallelujah. We look only unto God. So if you die, what? And we heard the triplets sang, heaven, there will be gold. Hallelujah. We'll be walking on those gold. What else? Here, the gold we put around our necks and our, around our wrists. Over there, we'll be walking on it. Hallelujah. People ask me, how come I don't have gold? And those, uh, I come from Ghana, the former Gold Coast. But that is not important. Hallelujah. It's what is inside of me that God is looking. Hallelujah. For us to do. So not to veer away from this. People are hungry for the word of God. But we approach them sometimes awkwardly, snobbish ways, without knowing their background. Because when you hear people's stories, then you see that the story you have is secondary. It's not important. Hallelujah. People have gone through. So I was looking and I saw a young lady with a T-shirt and on it is written. I don't know how they could write all that on it, but it was on the T-shirt. It says, be careful what you say to me. My grandma is crazy, and I'm not afraid to tell on you. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you look at these things. Yes, we go out there, and we try to speak to people. If you don't touch them in the right place, they get angry. Sometimes you are a nurse. You go to the patients who are not ready. They are hiked up waiting for somebody to devour <laughs> so when you go and the approach is not right they get angry they try to tell you things and it will lead you and you hear from my story here that uh, you get angry but you shouldn't hallelujah you should stay the same you should be able to contain that you should be able to do the things for which they have sent you to do Hallelujah. Sometimes my wife will call and she'll say, oh, you like, you, why do you like working like that? I said, even if I'm not here, I'll be doing the same thing on the street. Hallelujah. This is what we are called to do. So you'll be leaving and something happens and they call you right away. You have to turn back and go and fulfill it. Anything concerning God should come first. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't think about what you have lost or what you are losing. If God doesn't allow anything in your life, if you are hooked with him, no one can take it away from you. If they steal from you, they will return it a hundredfold. Hallelujah. Am I speaking to someone today? This is in preparation to go out there and speak to people. So you learn, you do those things not thinking about I'll be late for food or something home. Uh, I didn't feed my husband or my wife. Think about God's things first. Hallelujah. Okay. If not, he will give, he will tell you what you have to do to please your husband. What you have to do to please your wife. Hallelujah. I'm not saying, you know, we have to put him first, but our house also should be in order. Our house should be in order because you can be smiling here and you go home and you are sad. You cut everything that you have gained over here to a very uh, slim or short because there's nothing like that. Always show that exuberance. 
show people that God is with you and they cannot do anything. So here we have intentional and unintentional discipleship. We have to be intentional in that sense. For example, I'll give you some. Saul had to go through a drastic experience on how, uh, on his way to Damascus. You all know the story. And God had to touch him for him to obey. Because his motive was evil. Turning from a killer of Christians, becoming an apostle. Apostle Paul. So here... It was not his intention. It's unintentional. But he feared. He was scared. And he turned around. And when God turns you around, my brother, my sister, don't go back. You know the story. The demons that left you because his presence right away will change things and make you new. But when you go, and they are out there watching. You start behaving, cursing, and doing things again. They come back because it's better to go to the home you know than where you don't know. <laughs> and this time, they don't come alone. They come seven times. Seven. Hallelujah. Seven strong demons. So Moses also intentionally killed. His, he knew he killed an Egyptian and fled for his life unknowing that he had a call on his life to set the captives free. God then approached him at the burning bush, you all know the story, which he claimed he couldn't speak. In that long entanglement or, you know, causing God to almost get angry, he agreed to partner with his brother Aaron to face Pharaoh so that they will uh, see him, that the Jews will live, will have their freedom. God has a call on your life. Yeah. Hallelujah. If you don't know it, be on your knees. Yeah. Something you know how to do, something you know he has called you to do, do it. Do it. Hallelujah. Yeah. This is the only way we are going to achieve the things, the joy on this earth. Because we have 10 things around doing our own things first. And that is not the way of the Lord. Hallelujah. Our way is not the Lord's. Hallelujah. So Paul even uh, aided and abetted in the killing of Christians. The killing of Stephen, you remember. I just put a few things down for you to be strong in going. Build yourself with the word of God. Hallelujah. Discipline yourself by consistent prayer life. I tell you, and I've said it here, I will say it again. God has said to me that any place, this is why those who are doing, uh, are worshiping idols and other things are able to operate. Because every place that you set and you go there and pray every time, you make it a ground for him. That is how God meets you over there. The enemy knows the same thing, so they put a stone over there, and they call it their power. You can walk over that thing, and nothing will happen, because you have power inside of you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I hope live stream you are all watching, but take something out of this for your lives. It is so important. We serve a living God. We serve a living God. So the warning is this. If we were to go to Leviticus chapter 7, from verse 1, it tells you, even for verse 1 alone, Aaron's son, Nadab and Abihu, took their senses, put fire in them, and added incense. And they offered unauthorized fire before the Lord. Contrary to to his command. Hallelujah. Why am I saying all these things? After you've been trained, after you've been blessed with the word, you can go and do what you want. This is a household of priests. God has look, set a place for Aaron and his children that they are anointed for what they do. 
but they go in and do what you remember as uh, the same thing. You can't help God. You can't change his plans. Hallelujah. If he says go forward, he knows why he's telling you to move forward. He will provide. He will order your steps. He will make sure that you are surrounded. Like Elisha told his servant Gehazi, or Gehazi, as people would say, look up there. And he prayed and his eyes opened. And he saw that the angels, the people, the chariots around him were more than the people that were coming to get them. Hallelujah. So fear is the last thing that we should put. When you begin to fear, you create something for yourself. God created the world by the word. He spoke it to being. So if you want to shape your children, if you want to shape your life, never say, I'm afraid. I can't do this. I can't do that. You are shaping something that will harm you. Hallelujah. Speak the positive things, the right things, and you will see the results. So the place, how you speak, the things you do, you have to make sure they are all in line with the things that God has blessed, uh, blessed you or uh, ordered you to be. In this world, therefore, when we're talking about discipleship is the call oh, to learning what it means to follow Jesus. Then its purpose is to help everyone take an ownership in their own spiritual journey. As we grow in our understanding of what it means to be a Christian, that is what we should. Therefore, intentional discipleship is loving people with a purpose. It's not the smile that behind, right away you change it into something bad topic. When the person is around, you speak nice. And you negate that by right away saying something else. What you said good, Bishop says, if you don't have any good thing to say, don't say it. And it's a common saying that we should all be the same. So, hallelujah. The word, teaching the people the word of God, helping them grow in spiritual disciplines, and leading them into a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. When you come across the people, this is what you should do. So, Christian discipleship is not meant to put pressure on people. Hallelujah. And I'll speak about that when we go into the writing, the woman at the well, the lady from uh, the Samaritan, uh, Samaritan lady, whatever they call her, you will see that she uh, was ministering. Jesus taught us how to minister disciples from his presence. And at the well, right there, we'll get every information over there. Hallelujah. So as I continue to go on over here, we should begin by dis uh, disciplining people. Because you can't hide, you can't cover some things. I'm not saying you wouldn't be tempted, but we are tempted, but because we are living with the Holy Spirit. He always sees, he wants us, and if we don't obey, and you go. We saw Joseph, he had to flee from Potiphar. That is the safest way, it's not everybody that can flee. <laughs> Hallelujah. And sometimes the demon or the wicked person inside of you will not let you flee and get into trouble. So I'm speaking not only to the men because it was Joseph, to the women as well. When you see it flee, because the plans of the people are wicked. Man is wicked. Hallelujah. It's only by Jesus Christ that we become sane and do the right things. Hallelujah. If you want to be on your own, hear my voice. You can never succeed. You will have it. If it's the money, it will be given to you. But when it comes to the time that the one who gave it to you starts pulling you, 
That's when people start running to church. Hallelujah. But do it the other way. Seek God. Seek Jesus. Seek him. He's your way. He's your truth. He's your life. Hallelujah. Am I preaching to somebody today? You know, so we look at this and we see certain things. To build up also, we have to learn to follow people. Amen. Hallelujah. If you don't know how to follow, you wouldn't learn how to lead. Hallelujah. Because as you watch how Jesus walked, how he talked, as I watch Bishop, as I watch any of you, and I'm picking up some things, I'm learning how to live and how to move in life. Hallelujah. You don't see me jumping and doing all those things sometimes, but I'm picking up. And usually I pick what I need. Hallelujah. You can take everything that everybody is doing. This is why God didn't tell us to go and like people. He said to love them. Love is given by God. Hallelujah. The love of God. But liking people means if they like to do certain things, you will also like it. They're going to teach you to like it. They're going to show you how to do it. But if I love you, you learn with all things, and you look at me, even if you have that intention, it will not work. Hallelujah. Because he who is inside of me is greater than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit. Love others. Be yourself. Teach God's word. Learn to serve. All these things are there. Not because I'm going to run through them one by one. If I do that, you wouldn't pick it. But I'm speaking from experience and some of the things. When you teach the word of God, ask any teacher, you also learn. Even public teachers and whatnot, let me tell you, as long as you're a teacher, you see that teachers' children most times they do better because the mother has inculcated or father who is the teacher some great things and you are able to give out to others. As you're doing it, you are also learning. If we say away from the young ones, we wouldn't know how to even operate our phones. Hallelujah. New things are coming all the time. So be nice to them so that they can be nice to you. When you call them to come and do change some things for you, they do it right away. Hallelujah. But if you start scolding them at the wrong time, you call them and they are gone. And you don't know how to do it. Hallelujah. So we, it's a, a reciprocal kind of thing that we are all doing from our children to us. And very soon we will be gone. Uh, you don't want to hear that, right? You want to be here forever. <laughs> When I go to minister to people when someone is dying, I tell them, I think you're expecting maybe your person, your relative, whatever, to live to be 100. But that is not the solution. Jesus, the son of God himself, who had control over life, lived for 33 years which means there is something more to do. So when God calls you, that doesn't mean um, he didn't save your life. Some lives, their mansions are ready to go home. Hallelujah. And when your mansion is ready, I don't care what you drink, what you eat, which nurse takes care of you or which doctor takes care. God shall that allows it and you have to go home and rest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Am I speaking to your hearts? Let us discipline ourselves. So when we speak to people, they will know. So we've talked about love others. Also, it's just a fact that when you are disciplining others, you are going to have to get practical and set up some points that people cannot be part of those things. There are pillars in the word of God. And that pillar, you have to put it right. 
If you are training people or if you are, uh, what is it, discipling people, you have to make sure there are some things you tell them the truth. You don't wait till they experience it to get burned like a child before you go in. You let them know what God is saying and what has to be. So teach them and show them by experience. So I'm moving on to this now. How to represent the gospel. So you see Ab Abihu and Nadab, they died because they set some wrong fire. And we can do the same thing if we don't take care. And this is not our God that is coming with a whip behind you. Our God doesn't do that. He allows us because he's given you a choice of things. He's given you things that you have heard again and again. Hallelujah. When you follow that command, when you follow that precept, when you follow the plans of God, you will be well. That's when people see you as Christians and they are always saying, you look young still. You look well. What is happening? It is the one that is inside of you who is leading you into the right places to do the right things that you don't get burned, that you don't go and come back and forth. It is difficult to remain in a place, but you remain till your time comes. Hallelujah. Remain till your time comes. And when it comes, all people will hear about it. They will rejoice with you. They will enjoy with you. So here, be a good representative for God. The woman, a woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. <laughs> we should intentionally continue to explore how to share the gospel with people. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. Hallelujah. But the woman of Samaria, uh, Samaria came at 12, 12 noon. You see the contrast over there. Some will come to you in different times, different locations, but you should be prepared. Hallelujah. Nicodemus didn't want to be seen. And so he wanted to do his things secretly. How is that? The woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask me for a drink? The lesson here is that we often have to make the first move when we come out to introduce the gospel. Because if you see people going by and you don't go to them, they may never know who you are. Hallelujah. Sometimes God will bring them to you. Sometimes. But you have to make the first approach. If you don't speak to them, then you will lose somebody. So when, wherever you go to show how loving you are, even if you are on the elevator, greet people. Hallelujah. You want greetings back? You want a smile back? Greet them. Smile with them. And they will smile back. And your day is made right there. Hallelujah. So the lesson that we have to learn is go forward and approach them. Jesus reached out in a non-threatening manner. Amen. The Lord started his conversation with the woman by requesting a drink of water. Amen. He who had all things... Jesus has everything himself, but he was also vulnerable in this sense. His request made it comfortable for the woman to speak confidently with him. If you approach people nicely, they come to you. They reveal everything to you. I know, I'm not saying use this method to get news and spread it out. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> You, that is not the purpose. The purpose is to know 
if they are serving God or not. Hallelujah. So that you can use that to reach out, to evangelize them or uh, disciple them. So here Jesus broke a number of taboos that if I say I'm going to go through, it's a whole lot of things that he shouldn't. The woman being a Samaritan and being a woman and all the things they worship and all that. You know it. Bishop has preached with us all the time and I'm looking at the time. So we're going to be joining the, to learn the good things that you don't be offensive. The woman at one point, if you go to John chapter 4, verses 11 and 12, the woman said to him, Say, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? When you approach people, sometimes they fight. But you have to hit the soft parts of their lives. Hallelujah. If you know it and you do it, like Nicod you know, Nicodemus again, the Samaritan woman misunderstood Jesus' terminology, his way of talking. In the case of Nicodemus, when Jesus mentioned being born again, he asked whether he should go back into his mother's womb to be born again. So it's the same way when you approach somebody while you are discipling or, you know, they are going to jump. Sometimes they will say, oh, I don't want to hear it. Then you say something good, and it changes the whole topic. Hallelujah. Here was Jesus speaking, okay, to the Samaritan woman about spiritual water. Yet, she interpreted his words to mean a literal kind of water. For that reason, the woman was more concerned about how he will obtain the water than simply asking him to give, the, give her uh, a drink of the spiritual water. Because if we all know who Jesus is, we're going to ask for great and good things. Hallelujah. Always we will seek for those things. So in addition to misunderstanding Jesus, the Samaritan woman was also concerned about whether Jesus was greater than Jacob. And the world she had known all her life. She thought Jesus was less than Jacob. And she challenged his assertion about himself. Of course, Jesus was far more significant than Jacob and greater. But he didn't go right away and, uh, you know, show himself. He brought this up. So here, again, like Jesus, we must respond to such challenges with love and compassion. Hallelujah. When we share the gospel, we must be mindful that what is at stake is not persons' eternal, I mean, uh, people's eternal destiny, not your well being. Hallelujah. This is life. If you go in there putting yourself first, then you always get into trouble. Hallelujah. Okay. No more tests. Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will test again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him or her will test again. But God's you will never test. But the water I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water, him or her. Hallelujah. Springing up into everlasting life. God is leading us out there to fill this room, to fill our homes, to fill wherever we go. Hallelujah. So when the opportunity comes, don't go by your way to change it, that you lose it. Hallelujah. So here, moreover, whoever drank of the water from the well will test again. Surely the Samaritan woman could understand this. She had been coming out day after day to draw from the well. Yet the need was never wholly met. Because sometimes, based on how the approach is. And so it is with all the wells of this world, in all, men seek their pleasure, satisfaction in earthly things. 
But these sins cannot quench the test in the heart of man. However, the salvation that Christ offers, like living water, profoundly satisfies us. Is somebody satisfied today? People who depend only on physical water will be continuously thirsty. You will be thirsty. As St. Augustine said in his confession, O oh Lord, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless till they rest in you, until they rest in God, until we rest in God. There is an emptiness in every human being that only God can satisfy. Only God. We may fight the uh, emptiness and try to fill it with accumulation of knowledge, money, pleasure. No matter how much we accumulate, none of these things pursues can fulfill the quest of our hearts. Hallelujah. Can I have a clap of them for the Lord? Hallelujah. So this is true satisfaction. In verse 15, the woman said to Jesus, Say, give me this water now that I may not test, nor come here to draw. After interacting with him for a while, the woman finally made a request of Jesus. Hallelujah. She now wanted to have this marvelous water that the Lord was offering. Hallelujah. Even then, she was still thinking of the natural, literal water. She wanted it because she did not want to have to come out to the world every day. We wish those physical things would be done away with. But if you were sitting down doing nothing, your metabolism, your physical this will break down very quickly. Hallelujah. This is why we retire before the access to exercise. I mean, while you are young, you have to exercise. You have to walk every day. Walk around the park and come home. You are refreshed. Hallelujah. I do my working, um, walking somewhere else, and I won't reveal my secret. Hallelujah. <laughs> so whatever you do yours, try make sure you continue to do that. So true satisfaction, after interacting with him now, she wants it. The Samaritan woman did not realize that the water of which the Lord had been speaking was spiritual. She didn't know. They see Jesus as a solution to their problems and guarantee of material gain. This is what some people think. That when they come, you know when people come to church for the first time and give their lives. I had somebody tell me, Pastor, when I was outside, I used to have money all the time in my pocket. But when I come to church and go home, I have nothing left. Why is it so? I said, you will learn. <laughs> I just told him, he will learn. Because you are given to receive. Hallelujah. You are given to receive. So come to Christ to escape those things that we are yearning for. In Christianity, it's God first. If you are a Christian, why do you give your life to Christ as you share the gospel with others? What do you focus that attention on? All these things are very important. So no matter what our needs are, Christ will welcome us. However, when we come to him, he redirects our focus from serving him because of our needs to serving him because of who he is. Hallelujah. Who he is, not because of our needs. Hallelujah. If you have that in mind, it is not going to be. So preach empathy to people. Make sure you are doing stop unnecessary argument. I am going to put this to the end and then give you the final. The woman uh, from verses 19 to 20, the woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. After he had revealed some things about the husband and all, our fathers uh, worshipped on this mountain, and you Jews say 
that in Jerusalem is the place where we ought to. After Jesus revealed that the woman at the world had five husbands, she responded differently to him. She figured out that Jesus was not just passing, a passing uh, through Jewish rabbi because of the way the Lord had used supernatural knowledge to describe her, she concluded Christ must be the prophet. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But instead of confessing her sin and repenting, she threw out an intellectual red herring. Could he, so, uh, no, could he solve an ancient dispute? And that is where the Samaritan religion held that uh, one place of divinely ordered worship was on top of Mount Gerizim. Whereas the Jews said it was in the temple of Mount in Jerusalem. Who was right in this conversation? Isn't that interesting? A conversation that began about what are now veered to the subject of worship and respect. I mean, the results of this revelation about personal conduct. Brothers and sisters, know, know, know that we serve a living God. And this God, we have to be mindful. We have to always be there. We have to always follow his plans and his purpose. I can go on and on because I've downpacked entire, all of the, <clears throat> the Samaritan woman. So I'm leaving you with 20. If I ever come back again, we may start from another point to go on. <laughs> this is my church, so I'm here. But God is good. <laughs> God is with us. Brothers and sisters, I came to break this down for us so that we don't go and fight out there. We don't go in our own way. We don't go. Hallelujah. So in presenting the gospel to others, we must do so respectfully and honorably. The message of Christ should not be a tool with which we can condemn people and knock them down. It is a message of redemption for the downtrodden and the heavy laden. It is, let it be your aim to represent Christ well to the world. To present the gospel as he did it to the Samaritan woman with dignity and honor. And may we encounter Christ as she did and be true ambassadors, representatives of EUMC and the world. Hallelujah. And the world. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Let us stand on our feet. Hallelujah. What a mighty God. Hallelujah. What a great God we serve. He has been so good to me. And I know he's good to all of you. You wouldn't be here if he had not been good to you. And I don't know, I didn't look at the PowerPoint. But here you are in conclusion. First, you have this young boy holding uh, a, 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 what, a placard. And he tells you, he says, will you tell me about Jesus? People are waiting to hear. Let it be your aim to represent Christ well to the world. To present the gospel as he did to this woman, I repeat, with dignity and honor. At this moment, with our heads bowed, let us pray. If there is anyone as we pray, if you've heard the word and you have not made Jesus your first and the last, think about it. Your first and the last, there is something lacking in between. I want you to come forward. That the pastors, and others, uh, ministers, 
we lay hands to rejuvenate, activate what is inside of you. That you have to be sensitive to the spirit of God that dwells in you. Because on your own, you can do nothing. On your own, you cannot fulfill the things of God. It is well. It is well. If there is also anyone here that have not given his or her life to Christ, if you are here with our heads bowed, I just want to see that hand that you want to renew your life with Christ. Because without that covering, without that covering, all we do is veinless. It's not founded. Because you need his presence. That when people see you, they know you are a woman of God. They know you are a man of God. They won't tempt you with certain things that they will do to others. Say certain things around you. If there is anyone... I just want to I will you to come forward very quickly. Very quickly if you can. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you. What a mighty God we serve. Lord, you are the fulfiller of our lives. You are the one who blesses us. You are the one who has given us the touch that we need. This afternoon, Lord God, I come to bless and release fresh anointing over every household. Lord, even those who are mourning, Lord, we pray for that comfort. We pray for that touch. We pray, oh Lord, for that refreshment. That Lord God, Hey, they will break every yoke that is around them. That nothing can trick them to turn around. For to enter into this house is saying, I believe in Christ. Any foreign thing that does not belong here, Lord, we scatter it in the spirit realm. We remove it from the households. That there will be freedom in the house of God. Lord, I pray that your peace will be in every household. Remain with them. Heal the sick amongst us. Lord, you can reach anyone, anywhere. Those who are even hiding from me or cannot see me. Lord, they hear your voice. Let change come. That testimonies will flow. That they heard the word. And the word is at work in their lives. I release them with that anointing in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah in Jesus name. Hallelujah. 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 And now may the Lord bless you. And keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance over you and give you all peace, both now and forevermore. And let everyone say, Amen. Amen. Thank you for being in the house of God today. Thank you. Before you go, something that we do all the time, we want to see our guests for today. Oh, oh they are.